This is Twit. Actually, my question is coming from actually several places. Some of the folks that I work with, some of the folks in the chat room and one of the other hosts. And they're asking me to ask, how would you respond to the, I don't know, claims, rumors that some of the code that Huawei has been using in especially network equipment has, shall we say, been squishy on their right to be used? And the second half of the question really is, how do you feel about someday maybe the industry moves towards an independent third party to validate um, network security code and so forth beyond just having to trust us? Oh, absolutely. Let me start with the final point. In fact, uh, we have a transparency center in Brussels that not only customers can go in and evaluate our product, Governments, independent experts can do it. The only reason we've had the relationship we've had in the UK for the last 10 or 11 years is because we have an independent cybersecurity evaluation center overseen by the UK government. We have a center in Bonn, Germany, that uh, the BSI is working on in terms of independent verification of the products. And when you look at telecom equipment, as you may know, in addition to the 5G standards, there are standards focused on uh, telecom equipment, us and our competitors. Uh, and that's the NESAS, Network Equipment Security Assurance Scheme. And that sets out the standards for the telecom equipment and provisions for independent testing of the products modeled after the common criteria approach where you have recognized laboratories. So we are absolutely all in with the idea of independent testing of products. And in fact, I'd go one step further. I'd love to see the community, you, know, you, you, you folks and, and folks that you know, Call on, and same ought to happen with telecom and mobile operators, but call on Huawei and our competitors. Let's have a transparency and assurance initiative. Let's drill down and get experts to come in to the facilities of us and our competitors to analyze what we are doing and how we're doing it to make sure that our people are doing the right thing, to make sure that the managers know, to make sure that separation of duties is being followed, to make sure that the executives are getting fair reports of what's happening. and. Somebody needs to call on us and our competitors, because we've been trying to do this stuff on our own, to come up with minimum industry best practices for assurance and transparency. And bring in experts into the facilities, because there needs to be better R&D as to what is effective and better R&D in terms of what can provide transparency. So maybe there needs to be some kind of third parties that would get placed in the manufacturing facilities of us and our, our, our competitors to help manage. Similarly, and you, you're probably aware of this, that DHS a year or so ago talked about the need to supplement the continuous diagnostic and monitoring program, a very important program that monitors traffic across the federal agencies. It's been offered for critical infrastructure, but, but they have to pay for it. So DHS wants more information about how do you monitor network traffic? How do you look at anomalous activity? And so NIST put out a call for information and you know we fully support this. There needs to be experts need to say, what can we and our competitors do to provide greater assurance and more transparency? Because of the sophistication of the malicious actors where you have at least five in the world and the national security correspondent in the New York Times told me it's six, who can virtually implant hidden functionality in hardware and software that could be later, later triggered remotely at a time and a manner in the attacker's choosing. So that's why we need to have these processes relative to everybody because at least these five nation states, which of course includes China and, and the US, can hack into everything. So if we wanna be safe, we can't trust anybody. And in the US government in the last week or so is talking about distrust and verify. I'm all in for that. We've gotta do yeah, that. And yeah. And actually, this is actually one of the big soapboxes Kurt and I have been on that we're not seeing organizations, the end users, the consumers doing their own testing. It used to be a big deal. Kurt and I both used to run very large testing labs. I used to run the biggest one for InfraWorld. And my biggest soapbox is customers don't believe the glossies. You need to start doing your own testing. Maybe that's something we need to go and start bringing back. We need to have more of the end users doing their own testing. What do you think? Well, I'm not sure it's necessarily very likely that 
end user consumers can do that. But for example, in our space, when we're selling to the telecom and mobile operators, they're making sure there's testing of our stuff, testing of our updates, for example, um, before it goes in. Look at something like uh, uh, mobile devices in the United States. A couple years ago, the US government put pressure on AT&T and Verizon, and they'd invested millions of dollars because they wanted to be able to offer our phones. And they basically blocked them for national security reasons. You tell me what testing is done or overseen by the U.S. government relative to mobile devices, mobile device security in the United States. I don't know of any. 